Did you not hear the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran? Nasullah, 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 Fa'ansahum anfusahum, Fa'ansahum anfusahum. They forgot Allah, they neglected Allah, so then Allah made them forget who they are. Allahu Akbar, are you listening to this verse carefully? Allah is speaking about those who forgot Allah's verses. Allah who neglected uh, those who forgot, who neglected Allah their creator and turned to other things as being their objective. Turned to other things as being the most important thing for them. Turn to other things which they should strive for and reach instead of Allah. Allah says they forgot Allah by being distracted by other things other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them forget who they even are. Made them forget their own identity. Made them forget who you are and what is your purpose. Where are you heading? Nasullaha fa'ansahum anfusahum. They forgot Allah, so then Allah made them forget themselves. This is something natural. This is something uh, normal to occur. This is the effect of that. The cause is that we chose to forget Allah, those people, those people who forgot. So the result of that naturally equals a person forgetting who they even are. When you forget who you are, your heart becomes hardened. Your heart becomes darkened. And when our hearts become darkened, we become unhappy. When we become unhappy, we want to be happy. So when we meet people, what do we do? We act. We act. We put on a show. We become into a state of riya, a form of hypocrisy. Because a person wants to find happiness and they can't. And so they look for other things to bring them happiness. And the first thing they look for is worldly things that can bring them this happiness and this satisfaction. Otherwise, they feel that they have no value whatsoever. And this cannot be achieved except with hypocrisy. And there is no truth to it. These types of people lead on. What else? They start to lose their sight, their hearing. They start to lose themselves by going on to intoxications. And a lot of them who we hear about, such as celebrities and the likes of them, whom we on television, we think that they are living the life. But what happens to them? Suddenly we hear about them committing suicide. We hear about them dying of drugs, of alcohol. We find them partying all night until they died. They party to death. These types of people, we think they are living the life. And then we start to imitate them, thinking that this is where happiness comes from. But what's actually happened here to these people, Muslim or non-Muslim? They have forgotten themselves. My brothers and sisters in Islam. My brothers and sisters in Islam. If I want to know whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my priority or not, then the first sign that appears on me is a sign which I only know by myself. No one can know it except me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not my father, not my mother, not my brother or sister, not my friends, not my wife, not my children, only myself. It is when I no longer know who I am. Have you ever felt like that? Inshallah you haven't. But there are many, there are majority of people forget who they are. I'll give you an example. A person says, I am a Christian. I am a Jew. I am a Hindu. Whatever they say they are. If you ask them the question, why are you of that particular religion? The common response is this. Oh, because my parents are. I was brought up that way. Do you think this person knows who they really are? If I say to you, I am a Muslim because my parents are Muslim. Do I know who I am? Do I know why I'm a Muslim? Do I know what I'm meant to be doing? If I knew what I was meant to be doing, do I believe in what I am doing? Or am I doing it to please my parents now? Or am I doing it to please my culture? Or my people that are looking at me? Or the members in the masjid who see me going there? 
Or am I doing it to just put on a show to my family? The first sign of this hypocrisy is that when I'm alone, I have a different identity. When I'm alone, I watch things which I don't watch in the day. When I'm alone, I listen to things people don't know that I listen to. When I'm alone, I am happy that no one is watching me because the first thing I want to do is to resort to the things which Allah hates. This is one of the other signs of a person who does not know who they are. Or they think they are something, but they are not. Putting on the show. So when you ask a person, why are you a Muslim? I wonder how many people can give a proper answer. Why have you grown your beard? Why do you wear hijab? Why do you pray? I wonder what kind of answers we get. On the outside, we can all find what we call politically correct answers. Answers that are the proper answers should be said. But who am I really? Do I fit the description which I am putting? When Allah says, they forgot Allah, Allah made them forget themselves. I no longer know who I am. On the outside, I look like something, but on the inside, I'm completely something else. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said. Here is just an example of how a person knows who they are. He says, مَنْ تَرَكَ النَّظْرَةَ لِلَّهِ عَوَّضَهُ اللَّهُ عَوَّضَهُ اللَّهُ حَلَاوَةً مِّنَ الْإِيمَانِ يَجِدْهَا فِي قَلْبِهِ Whoever, for example, abandons looking at something which is forbidden, Allah will expiate that or will compensate that with a sweetness of the feeling of Iman which they find it inside of their heart. The point of that hadith which I wanted to allude to is not the fact that a person uh, stopped looking at haram. This is only one thing. What I'm trying to say is, when a person stops any act which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates, it means that that person is only wanting the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in how they use their eyes, for example, or how they use their body, how they use their time. And as a result, the genuine, the genuine, the, the sign of you being genuine in that, meaning that Allah is your objective by abstaining from this, by controlling yourself, the sign of this genuine love for Allah, making Him your priority, is that you will find a feeling of sweetness inside of your heart. This sweetness, wallahi, if you give this person everything in the world, if you give them everything that any human desire would want, it will not make a difference in their sweetness that they feel inside their hearts. Are you like me? When was the last time you felt the sweetness of Iman? Was it last night? Is it now? Or was it a year ago? Ten years ago? When you were a child? When was the last time I felt this deep sweetness of Iman? Where in the night I felt like waking up when everybody else was asleep and I just felt this drive to make me stand alone in the dark with a tiny candle or a tiny light. I don't want anyone to see me. I don't care if anyone sees me or knows what I am doing. I just have this sweetness, this love to get up and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to speak to Him because I love Him. I feel the sweetness that doesn't leave my heart. It makes me give up my sleep. Because the sweetness of what I am doing is more beloved to me than my sleep. When was the last time you or I felt this particular sweetness? Then not only that, as I was praying in the night, I don't know why, but I felt that my heart began to pound in such a way I've never felt before. It's not the pounding of a person with a heart attack. It's not the pounding of a person who has been exercising for so long. It's not the pounding of a person with a sickness, but the pounding of something called a sweetness that has affected my eyes to water and now I'm crying. And I don't know why. The only thing I can say is there is a sweetness inside me that makes my tears flow out of consciousness and love and communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When was the last time you felt like that? I'll tell you when. It was the time when you felt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truly your only objective 
in your whole entire life. 